246 Stone Ridge, right around the corner from where we are right now. But that location gives us more space for staff. It also gives us a huge conference and training room. So we're hoping to have an in-person meeting before the end of the year. I hope anyway. Um, I We've been doing Zoom now for the last two years, since 2020. Um, I really would like to meet some folks in person. Um, and hopefully we can do that at the end of the year for the next meeting or so. But we're growing, the staff is growing. Um, right now, we have been budgeted for six additional people. Um, that will take my staff up to about 26, which is excellent. When I came here in 2018, I had 11 people. So we have grown, we've expanded our services. We are covering a more diverse um, uh, platform that helps across lines, all kinds of, we go from housing to uh, our research goes from housing to education. We try to cover as much of the state as we possibly can to educate people about what we do at the Commission for Minority Affairs. And a lot of folks are learning more and more about us and we're glad that they are. So we are in demand, as they say. Folks are calling us to help with a lot of things, including um, cultural competency training, diversity, equity, inclusion training, and several other things that we do to help other agencies and organizations around the state to understand um, the impact minorities have in the state of South Carolina and why a minority should not fall between the cracks for any reason. We should be able to receive the same resources and benefits as everyone else in the state. That's what we do. We get out there, we advocate for what is right and um, it has paid off in the uh, in the long run, and we're hoping to see some more exciting things in uh, this year. Hopefully, you'll we'll have in person as well as you'll invite CMA to some other events that you'd like for us to be a part of. We like coming out, setting up booths. Uh, my staff's very qualified to speak on different topics. So please, if there's an event going on and you would like for CMA to have a role in that event, please give us a call and we'll be more than happy to come out and share and to join your efforts in the community so that we can make sure that we are advocating for you and that we're making a difference in the lives of people. All right, on our board, let's see, do we have an agenda, Alex? We do, yeah. Yeah, I All think right. uh, we have our there it is. manager update next. All right. We're going to let you hear from some of our folks now. So therefore, um, if you want to take control of the agenda, Alex, and announce who's to come up next, that would be great. Uh, Yvonne, do you want to give us uh, an update? What's going on with the... Uh... Oh, was he... did he just leave? I think oh, he, he just left. He was on there. He <laughs> must have lost contact. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, oh, there, there he is. is. Okay. He's back. Okay. Yvonne, I was, I was uh, asking you if you could give us an update about what's going on with Hispanic affairs. I think you might have some trouble. I think he is. I think he's having some technical difficulties. Okay. Um, uh, Robert, I know I didn't, I didn't really ask you earlier if you could give us an update, but could you let us know about the, the statistical profile that you're working on or that you work uh, on? Sure. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, the statistical profile for the 2021-2022 fiscal year uh, was completed. Uh, I think we are already running, uh, you know, physical copy printing runs, and hopefully it'll be published. I think we're talking in January officially mm -hmm. when we pass it on to the legislators. Um, I think it's going to be a really good document for us to sort of ground a lot of the work that we're doing in various communities across the state. Um, I'm hard at work on the next uh, statistical profile. Uh, hopefully this year, especially because I've been front loading a lot of the research, we can actually pro produce statistical profiles for each program area. 
Um, and I think it would be really good for us to have an Asian American Pacific Islander statistical profile completed. If not this year, hopefully next year. It really depends on if we can uh, hire the the research analysts and statisticians, um, which we've had some uh, mixed news in the past few days. But uh, hopefully that that comes through. It'll alleviate some of the the, the sort of day to day research work that I could focus on the bigger picture items like developing these projects that um, I would really like us to complete. But yeah, the 2021-2022 fiscal year statistical uh, profile is completed, uh, already is going to print, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to share that with you all as soon as um, uh, as we deem fit. Um, if you have any questions about research, any requests, feel free, let us know. Um, we're always willing and able um, to help um, when in uh, whenever possible and applicable. Uh, thank you very much. I hope that's right. good enough for me. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Robert. Um, Yvonne, are, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not going to turn on the camera. It's got a bad connection. connection. Yeah, you got out it. of the it's kind of hard to understand you. You've got but, a bad uh, connection. But I'll I'll give an update uh, just because yeah. uh, Yvonne's having some trouble with his uh, connection here. Um, so it's we're in the middle. Actually, technically, Hispanic Heritage Month has just ended. Um, it goes from September fifteenth to October eighteenth. And if you hear some crying in the back, that's my dog. <laughs> we're usually outside playing right now. So uh, if you hear like some whining, that's what's happening. Um, so. Uh, Hispanic Heritage Month officially ended, but we are still going to be going around the state, uh, you know, participating in events that are uh, being done by the community uh, all over the state. Um, our next one will be in Somerville this Thursday. Uh, and Yvonne is doing uh, an event for the Day of the Dead, November 12th, uh, as part of his uh, um as, uh, as part of Palmetto Luna. Um, but throughout this month, we've been going uh, throughout the state, uh, taking advantage of all the events that people are, are have created. And we've been to uh, uh, Wahala, South Carolina. Uh, we've been to uh, North Augusta and plenty of other places because there's like a million events going on uh, happening throughout uh, Hispanic Heritage Month. Which, it, which we're really grateful for. It seems like there's more and more every year. Um, and uh, that's, that's the bulk of what's, what's happened so far. Um, I, may have me, I may be missing some stuff, but um, that's, what's, what's, that's what's been happening. Very good. And that's what we try to do. We try to focus on all, all of the population, all the folks that we represent trying to get involved in the communities. That's why I'm asking you if there are events that we need to learn about, feel free to call us. Um, we are, we just closed on the posting for our Asian American program coordinator. So we will be interviewing, uh, the posting closed last week. We will be interviewing candidates to take on this division um, starting in, in November. And th that would be, be a lot helpful, more helpful for us because we'll have someone focusing directly on, on the Asian population and different events that are going on around the state and to keep the, the commission updated so that we are not leaving anyone out or, or we're celebrating right along with you um, in all of the activities that are going on um, around the state. Raj, how's everything going with your international group? Coming together well. Thank you for being a part of the festival. And, Absolutely. And we're already planning for the next one. We're not exactly sure what theme we're going to focus on, but uh, we'll have a meeting this Thursday. And okay. then we met last month. But I think uh, I'm excited about all that is going on. <clears throat> Uh, especially where I know you have grown the your office, so I'd like to maybe get some help in getting some yes. 
uh, some other research I couldn't focus myself on. <laughs> Maybe your office can focus yes. on. Uh, especially in the economic impact area. Absolutely. Of, Absolutely. Of just the, you know, we have about close to more than 1,300 international companies in South Carolina. 7% of the employment is created by the foreign owned manufacturing groups. Wow. Those are big companies, not, not looking for the gas stations and the motels and the hotels. Right. All that other group, but I'm talking about the big manufacturing groups alone uh, employ about 7% of the state's uh, workforce. <clears throat> and I try to see that the, my focus also has been international students. That's been, I've been working for the last, I know we had some in the past have done some research. I, I'm just taking the same old statistics and maybe applying to today. I was, USC president had a reception for internationals a week ago, exactly last Tuesday. <clears throat> and then there are about 1,600 internationals on the campus. Wow. About 98 to 100 countries. And we are still coming. Somebody just came this past weekend. So uh, I like to just have somebody focus on the, the economic impact yes. of international student. I, I think, you know, South Carolina brings in a lot of money into uh, through international students. So I thought that maybe somebody could focus on doing some research on economic impact, not only the tuition, just the living, buying Absolutely. costs, Absolutely. everything they do to generate market in economy going in our state. <clears throat> that would be a big help to me. Uh, and we hope to grow the the festival because last two years we did the in-person event uh, even though pandemic was still around. But I think last year's our good estimation that we got about 15,000 people come for an indoor event. And that's a very good, we'd like to go back to the original numbers of at least 20,000. Sure. So that's been, uh, yeah, I'm also looking for some killed people to run the festival too. It's a, we, we are volunteers, but volunteers can only do so much with everybody so busy. Sure. With, if, um, I don't see Lin Wong here. Lin helps me also very much. Uh, we like to get more of our, this group here, you know, and then other groups that you're working with, all the minority groups that your office providing the support services, Maybe that would be good. Thank you for sponsoring it. Uh, and I appreciate all that going on. I'm trying to, I'm 70 years old. I'm just going to declare my age, okay? <laughs> and Well, we will definitely, why don't we have a conversation on how we can help sure. create a committee to spearhead yep. that? Um, yeah, we have a committee. We're looking for more. Okay. Support staff. In sure. our, yeah. Thank you so much. I Absolutely. don't want to much time. Yeah. Well, we will definitely be in touch to, to try and help get the, some support staff in place. A quick question for Raju. Yeah. Uh, Raju, think, since you mentioned about um, um, uh, jobs provided by, by international uh, investment, international companies. I, I believe um, that in the past, at least, uh, hopefully it's, it's true uh, still, that South Carolina has been um, boasting to be number one in the country in terms of labor force, force employed by international companies per capita in, in the country. Is it still the case? And I believe there are also a very large number of uh, Asian uh, companies invested in South Carolina. Yeah, if you go to South Carolina Department of Commerce, they have a pretty good data, up to date on that one. <clears throat> and I think we may not be the number one anymore, okay? Uh, but I think maybe we're in the top three, I think still. Uh, I think the pandemic may have to do something with it. Uh, before, not too many years ago, we were the number one in, a, in the continental USA. Uh, Hawaii always has been in a pretty much there because of closeness to the, the, the Asia and the Pacific you know, 
I there, but I think we're still up very high on the list. Well, that would definitely be something that we can, once we build that research team to get uh, Dr. Fenton some, some help, I believe that can be something that we can focus on and try to pull together that kind of data that will be very useful because um, we share our data with everybody, including the, the governor, the General Assembly, everyone. And um, it's good to have that kind of data because I don't think folks understand exactly the economic impact of international students in the state of South Carolina. So um, that would definitely be one of those things that we would look into. Yeah, I think in across the country, you know, there's some good estimations of you know how much internationals contribute to our economy. But South Carolina, I'm not, I'm just multiplying by an average of about fifty thousand dollars per person, mm. whether they're paid by the universities, because either way they're they're employed here, or they're bringing their own money. It doesn't right. matter. Average right. fifty thousand per person. And then you multiply it by the number of internationals just in the Columbia area alone. Right. So about 200, you know, maybe 2,000. That itself is about 200 million bucks. Yeah. Just in the, in the Midlands area. <clears throat> wow. We will definitely have make that one of our priorities coming up. Thank Alex, you. do you have any more staff who want to share information? Uh, no, I think that's it for now. Okay. Um, well, why don't we hear from, uh, are you, do, are you through or do you have something else? Yeah, I'm just going to go over some, some of the updates that, that we've, okay. uh, that's happened since, since our last meeting in May. Um, so in May, it was obviously API Heritage Month. Um, uh, Mr. Raj was, uh, able to do his international festival in, in that month as it happened to be. Uh, it worked out that it was API Heritage Month, and um, and and uh, what we decided to do uh, during that month was to uh, keep it relatively simple. In that, uh, we we produced a almost like a a, a docu series where we, uh, we we just reached out to the community. Uh, we chose two of our. Uh, advisory board members, Dr. Lee and uh, Mr. Jimmy Chow. And uh, we, uh, we contracted with uh, a Filipino American videographer. His name's Ken Lava. He, uh, he's a young guy and, uh, but he produces very, very uh, nice uh, videos. And uh, we had him help us produce um, four videos where we highlighted these individuals and, uh, what it what it means for them to be API in America. And uh, again, that was Dr. Lee. He's in the call right now. And um, as well as Mr. Jimmy Chow, we had a student, a Vietnamese student that went to USC, uh, uh, Tina, Tina Tien, I think is how you pronounce her name. Sorry if I, if I said it wrong. Um, and uh, we also highlighted uh, our, uh, um, our uh, city councilwoman, uh, Oddity Bustles. So it was nice to, to do that as those videos were very successful and it, we had the opportunity to highlight people in our community um, without having to, um, you know, ha without, you know, having to do too much with, uh, of, uh, as far as producing like a big event or uh, really like having to take time to, to do something big um, seeing as that uh, our program is still relatively new and, uh, and, you know, with our limited staff, we're happy that we still were able to do something right. Um, we also have uh, had our, uh, our interns, uh, Jacelyn Aradaza and Daniel Oswalt. Uh, they've been, they've been here since May. Um, actually, Jacelyn has uh, recently uh, is doing an internship in Washington, D.C., uh, she left at the beginning of September, and Daniel has has just got back from his internship uh, in Tennessee, I believe, where he was gone for the summer, and uh, he he just returned. So he'll be helping us out with uh, you know our future projects. Um, but Jacelyn really uh, really helped us out in, uh, over the summer. 
Uh, she helped us out with producing those videos. And, uh, and what we did as well is we, we took a page out of uh, Hispanic Latino Affairs and we produce a series of CMA sessions where, uh, where we, uh, you know, we just sit down with an expert in a certain topic. And we recorded three of those. Uh, one is still yet to be released. Uh, but two of them are out on our social media pages where we had Jacelyn, our intern, uh, sit down with a uh, expert um, and just talk about uh, their experiences as an API person in South Carolina. Uh, we had actually one of our advisory board members um, uh, be part of that. And uh, yeah, those, those have been really successful. And while the, all that was going on, we just had uh, Jacelyn and Daniel. I, Daniel was here for part of it, but they were working on an, a uh, almost like a resource document. Uh, we, ca we called it a, like a compendium of resources uh, available in South Carolina associated with API population. Um, so that ranges from, you know, the stores, the services available, um, and uh, the, just some general facts and, uh, you know, some things that you, you should know culturally about the API community in South Carolina. Um, that's still not released, uh, as that's still being polished up, but it's a big document. Um, but yeah, um, I think that might be all for now. Um, oh yeah. And, uh, we also had Jacelyn, uh, pursue a creation of a, uh, API Youth Advisory Board, similar to this one, um, but dedicated to um, uh, like uh, the younger crowd, uh, mainly students uh, around the state, uh, not just at USC, but you know at a College of Charleston and at Clemson University mainly, um, so that you know that uh, we can also lean on them for advice and get their opinion and experience on on things we might need. So um, that's that's still being developed. Um, obviously all of this is really uh, young as we're still trying to, uh, you know, we're, we're just getting a, an API program coordinator. So we're working with what we have, but I, I believe that we're, we're doing a pretty good job. Um, and that leads me to the next uh, point. Uh, I don't know, anyone can jump in at any, any time if they uh, have any questions. Um, but uh, the next uh, point I have is uh, Filipino American History Month, which is actually the month of October. Um, it's the only other nationally recognized month. See, <laughs> Roy knows what's up. So it's the only other uh, nationally recognized month uh, regarding uh, API populations by the by the White House. Um, so we decided to you know highlight it. Uh, actually, th this Saturday on the twentieth, from uh, oh, what is this? We have a oh, we have our little flyer here. Okay, so we have our little flyer here showing what, what what's going on on Saturday, the twenty second. Um, we will be doing a little uh, celebration at Boyd Plaza during the Soda City Market. So if you're if you know of Columbia. Or are you from Columbia? You know what Soda City Market is. It's basically like a flea market um, where they close down Main Street and the people put their posts up, vendors put their posts up and sell stuff, food, all kinds of stuff. But we will be at Boyd Plaza, uh, a part of the Columbia Museum of Art. And we will be doing a showcase of Filipino culture uh, from nine to one. Um, as you can see, here's our schedule. Uh, Mainly we'll be doing showcases of uh, culture, like clothes and items from the Philippines, as well as uh, doing some crafts, uh, making lanterns and mats, the traditional Filipino lanterns and mats. And at 11 and 12, we will be doing some dancing, uh, uh, a, a demonstration by the Filipino uh, American Association of Greater Columbia and peop who, people who just want to join and participate. So. If you're in town, please come out um, and celebrate with us. But besides that, we're just doing some posts on me on social media, uh, highlighting uh, Filipino Americans. Uh, but yeah, 
that was a lot of talking. So Very anyone good. has any, anything else to say that you can jump in. Roy? Yeah, Roy, jump in, Alex. Okay. Alex, thank you so much for uh, making mention of Filipino American uh, History Month and the events that are going on in Colombia. Um, I may go out with my children to check that out because they, my children are, are in uh, Raleigh and they'll be visiting me this weekend. Um, and hopefully we can uh, spend some time over uh, at the festival. And uh, I do have a, uh, one announcement where the Filipino Americans are concerned. I've got the, uh, um, for the first time ever, Team Philippines is, is fielding a, a, bass, a championship uh, bass. The, the, the current uh, black bass fishing championships are at Lake Murray, Columbia. And Team Philippines is, for the first time ever, fielding a team of anglers. So um, good luck to my brothers doing that. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's a big deal. It's, and uh, and uh, I went to an event last night at the Doubletree in Colombia. It was great to see all the other countries. Uh, team Laos uh, also is fielding a team for the first time ever. It's just great to meet uh, fellow Filipinos as well as uh, international anglers coming here for this world uh, world event. And uh, I appreciate the efforts of all, everyone here in you know, promoting Asian and Pacific Islander uh, heritage. So thank you, Alex, uh, Ms. DaCosta, and everybody else. Absolutely, absolutely. And um, at this time, I'm going to open the floor. I know that Raj mentioned research. If there are any other projects or, or things of interest you'd like for CMA to be a part of or to spearhead, let me hear your, your comments at this time. Well, it seems, uh, it seems that through um, Ed's report, there's a lot of being accomplished and congratulations. Mm -hmm. And Roy sounds very exciting of the up, about the upcoming events. Hopefully there'll be uh, more and more involvement throughout uh, the state. Um, I do have two um, uh, pieces of the news to report, and, and one uh, is that uh, both at Clemson University, uh, as I'm from uh, Clemson University, we had our um, um, Asian Heritage uh, Month uh, in last April, just right before uh, the school's over in the spring. And um, we uh, started to have uh, uh, look for uh, speakers, uh, one speakers, but we ended up to have uh, uh, three or four speakers. And one of that is our um, uh, distinguished member of, of this group is uh, Jimmy Chow. Mm -hmm. And he came to um, uh, Clemson University and gave a very nice, uh, very important talk, especially uh, covering the history of AAPR, uh, AAPI groups uh, uh, in the United States. Um, that's one uh, piece of uh, um, um, accomplishment that uh, Clemson University has done. The second one is uh, throughout the um, summer, this past summer, uh, uh, we, uh, with a, a bunch of um, faculty members, uh, staff, as well as students, um, we um, uh, set up uh, the uh, AAPI Commission at Clemson University. So this is a major, I believe, of progress for Clemson University. Um, we did uh, uh, quite well uh, something and, and, and uh, developed the bylaws. And this coming Friday, we're going to have our first meeting of uh, Clemson's uh, AAPI uh, Commission. And here, uh, Kenneth uh, played uh, a very important role, a, a very um, uh, instrumental role in putting together um, the bylaws and the push uh, everything forward. And definitely, um, uh, we hope that we'll have uh, more uh, dialogues con and connections between the state level commission and the commission at Clemson University. Currently, we have a ver very able leader, um, Linda Lee uh, Burrell, and, and she's um, a professor of uh, music uh, mm -hmm. and she plays piano. And she's been very, very active as a, a true a natural leader for the group. So um, hopefully there will be more um, 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 news that can report or uh, Linda will reach out to, um, to, to all of you guys. Absolutely. And if you could email Alex um, or once we get our, our, our program uh, coordinator in place, we add those things to our calendar. 
and put it on our, our, our Facebook. We put it on our, our webpage so that folks can see all the activities going on around the state with the different groups that we work with. So anytime, just share that information and we'll help spread the word. Absolutely. So Alex, I will, I'm going to connect you and Linda together so you can um, talk and, and plan if there's anything needs. Definitely, I believe we'll come back again uh, in the spring. I believe Clemson University will uh, um, uh, plan and, and do another uh, Asian Heritage Month on, on campus. So we're going to involve a lot of students and the faculty members as well as community and members around the region. Yeah, definitely uh, looking forward to connecting. Um, that's that's exactly what we're shooting for. Uh, basically, the more creation of things like that, um, it's very beneficial when we see students grouping up, um, as we can see at like other universities. And in my experience with the Hispanic community, uh, it's very helpful for to have a, a central place where you know you can go to uh, if there's anything you need. But yeah, uh, I'll, I'll I'll make sure we connect. Great, thank you very much. Um, if I may add, um, I want to take this opportunity to um, thank um, uh, the leader of the group, uh, Dr. Uh, DaCosta and her team, um, uh, as well as um, other offices in, 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 uh, in the state. Um, when, when we had um, some difficulties in our community members uh, um, uh, facing like uh, discrimination or, or um, 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 harassment, uh, we reach out to the office um, and uh, Dr. Dakotas and, and uh, others were really um, helpful and, and they provide the support that was uh, very much needed, um, including the, um, uh, the office of uh, Senator Tim Scott. Uh, they also reach out to us. Um, so uh, that's, um, I, I really feel there's a community, community of understanding, community of support, especially um, in the face of um, difficulties, in face of um, uh, uh, the need of support. And we definitely look forward to uh, see more and more positive uh, outcomes out of um, the support from, uh, from the commission as well as the leadership. Thank, Thank you very you much so again. Much. Thank you so much. I'm so glad that we could help. Anything else from the group? What I was going to say also was that maybe uh, all that's happened in the interim between our last meeting and this meeting, if, if some reports or some emails can go out with the links like you are putting on the chat room. Sure. Those things would really help because I'm not a good chat follower. <laughs> okay. So, Alex, if you could send those links out to the entire group, that would be great. All that you mentioned, you know, then we can leisurely you now look at them and any, any, any communication like that via emails would be a big help. All right, we will definitely get that going and moving it, and we'll make that a a standard after each of our of our meeting, even during during the month. If there's anything going on, we will send advisory members um, those links so that you're aware of the, everything that we're working on and the things that are going on around the state. Anything else? Well, you're a great group because we get a lot accomplished in 30 minutes. And, and that's amazing. You're, yeah, I mean, we get a lot accomplished and we don't take all night to do it. And that's the way I like to operate. I appreciate all of you being a part of this call and being a part of the advisory committee. Anything that we can do to help you in your endeavors, please reach out to us and we will do everything that we possibly can to help. And if we can't help you, I think I know enough people who can. And that's the name of the game. We can always make a contact. If, even if we have to go to the governor or the U.S. Senator, we have those contacts and we take advantage of those, um, those contacts whenever we need it to help um, make your lives better in South Carolina. I was just going to add a couple of quick things. Uh, we always do a big Thanksgiving dinner 
for okay. in, this will be November the 18th. Okay. But, I'm not sure how uh, there are a lot of international teachers, mostly from the you know Asian communities here in in Columbia area, especially across the state. But last day when we had the Thanksgiving banquet, quite a few of them came, including some from Philippines. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so that will be at First Baptist Church. They have a big banquet hall. So they host each year. And we also did our welcome banquet for the first time since the pandemic. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, we this is November 18th? That's for the Thanksgiving. Okay. What time? Yeah. Uh, we say at 6.30, but that's an international time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we eat at 7 o'clock. That gives us half an hour to get everybody together. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But also... Benedict has a growing international student population now. Very good. Uh, so, you know, we have Columbia College, Midlands Tech, Allen, Benedict, and USC. Of course, CIU, Columbia International University, they do get a quite a few internationals also in their programs. Very good. Yeah. Well, we will hear from Benedict tomorrow. Um, on a, we have our African American Advisory Board meeting in the morning, so uh, I know Dr. Artis will probably re be reporting on some of that tomorrow morning. So that's wonderful. And also, Benedict is having an international day on the twenty fifth in the afternoon. Who's having this? Benedict. Okay, on the twenty fifth. Okay, very good. We will definitely put that out. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you all so much. Enjoy your evening. And hopefully our next meeting will be in person. That's the plan. So we'll see if we can make that happen. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Okay. Have a good, good evening. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you.